On today's show, Donovan Mitchell says he's starting to feel more like himself. Is he right? How will we know that he's actually on the way back to being himself? We'll discuss that and more on today's Locked on Cavs. You are Locked on Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. All right, Donovan Mitchell is where we have to start, Evan. This is Locked on Cavs. I'm Chris Manning. That's Evan Damerol. Thanks again to Jake Stevens. As always, after the Cavs played the Suns, which we'll talk about in segment two, he spoke about how he's starting to feel more and more like himself. These quotes are via Cleveland.com, um, and they've been re- repeated elsewhere as well. But uh, he says, quote, it's not just going to happen overnight for me. And as much as it sucks, I have to be patient. I was happy with how I came out in the second half. And how I felt, continue building on that. It wasn't perfect, obviously, but we're at our best when I'm aggressive and continuing to get downhill. Saw it in spurts, just trying to get back into my flow, end quote. He also discussed how there's nothing, stru- there's nothing quote, crazy, end quote, wrong, nothing structurally wrong, nothing to be concerned about. And that, to me, the, the big one, I'm not going to make things worse by doing what I am doing. So, Evan, when Donovan Mitchell says that, he says he started to feel more like himself. Do you believe him? Are there signs to you that that's true or not true? And what would it look like for him to actually look something more like himself by the time the playoffs start? Um, The best way for him to look more like himself when the playoffs actually begin is obviously like we ran a poll or I ran a poll rather the other day of like we because you and I had this discussion of like what percentage Donovan Mitchell was at. And the overwhelming consensus was from just people who replied and tuned into the show like they, they think he's at 60 percent capacity this was before the uh game against um phoenix but regardless like yeah i think 55 50 55 60 65 percent somewhere in that range makes sense for mitchell and if he's as close to 100 percent as possible it makes your life a lot easier of course but um i think more importantly um it just overall uh just makes things easier but like based off of the comments i think it makes sense and just the way he played too kind of makes sense too um like he he was kind of lacking a little bit of that burst earlier in the season but you notice like he had a little bit of of oomph in his game against the suns and i think just the fact that this was his first like 20 point scoring effort or 20 plus he broke the 20 point margins for the first time since the Cavs beat the mavs since god knows when how long ago that was but like I think that certainly is indicative of just like how serious this knee injury is and also just like how it is really sapping from his actual game and what he's able to provide to the Cavs on a nightly basis. And, you know, yeah, it's just a welcome sight to have him back and kind of fully in the fold like that. I guess I just I if fully in the if this is like fully in not the fold, fully I, in the fold, but yeah. he's getting back in. It, it felt more closer to who and what Donovan Mitchell was as a player before he had the knee injury and comparatively to like what he has been dealing with and what I've just seen from watching him play. Like it feels, it feels like he's making progress, I guess I should say. Yeah. There was like urgency in what he was doing. And maybe that's just because they got their butts kicked in the first half. And there was a sense of like self pride and like self ownership and accountability within him that he's like, yeah, I don't want to like go out and get punked like this. Like maybe there's it could just be as simple as that. The quote again, I said this, but the the quote to me that sticks out is, "I'm not going to make things worse by doing what I'm doing." Let's just like assume that's true. That means it's like he's never going to be fully right. That's like kind of like a tacit admission that he's probably not going to be right. I think we kind of have assumed that to some degree. I also just there has to be like a part of him that is believing what he's saying, and I think that's why like he says it, but. I, I don't know if we're going to, I don't know, like if he, like, I don't know if he's going to play both games this weekend. I would guess probably not. No. Even go further to say, like, he's not going to do anything to compromise himself. I also just don't think, like, he's, it, it may not even be, like, resting him on 
a back to back of the five games the Cavs have left, like if his knee doesn't feel good, the Cavs just shut him down and just don't play him that night. Like they they're at that kind of level, I'd say. Yeah, and I think the problem there is then you have five games left. You play Saturday, you play Sunday. So let's say he's not gonna let's say he doesn't play Sunday, right? He gets to enjoy the LA night life and with without repercussions of playing on Sunday. Not that that's why he would sit, but like that's a joke. Next week, play. he gets two days off. He would have three days off before they play Wednesday. And then he would play Friday the 12th against the Pacers. And then Sunday the, the 14th against the Hornets. But those last three games, all at home, all at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. That's a pretty light schedule to end the year. But is it also enough time for him to actually feel like himself? Then, Because then you go from April 14th. And the Cavs would either play on the 20th or they would play on the 21st, depending on, on how this, the scheduling goes for the first day, the weekend of the playoffs. So he would have then either six days or a full week before he would play again. And then maybe, like, and we don't know where the scheduling is, like what the standings are going to look like by April 14th. Maybe, like, it doesn't make sense to play anyone that day. And his last game is April 12th. So, like, how, what is the, what is the balance of him? playing and getting into a rhythm which i think is necessary versus like caring for his like what is the balance and how do you actually walk that type of that's that's a massive question and i don't think you like anyone exactly can answer from the outside or even he could actually answer until we see how it goes yeah and i think that's just kind of the way you have to approach it and tackle it looking at this is yeah you want to prioritize these remaining regular season wins as often as you can just because it is so tight at three, four, and I'd even say five. And I, I think, realistically speaking, the lowest the Cavs may go is four. But who knows how the regular season, the remainder of it, shakes out? Like the, the Knicks are dealing with the blow of losing Julius Randle for the season, so it's always tough, even if Randle hasn't been out there as of late. But um, uh, that's neither here nor there, <clears throat> to be frank. It's just, can you find that delicate balancing act where you're thinking like, okay, we are equipped enough, we are able enough, because the, the Cavs, frankly, are reeling on both ends of the floor. Like, they aren't good right now, but, like, can they afford to let Mitchell get those on-court reps to kind of test his knee, feel out his body, and see, like, okay, I physically feel a little bit better than I did before, um, and can I keep just kind of building this slowly but surely momentum so I can be more impactful, not in these regular season games with the five left that they have but when the playoffs actually start regardless of who they end up playing in the first round like i think that is just the priority and that's also something he made explicitly clear he's like yeah the focus now is just me getting healthy for the playoffs the the seeding part of it will also just be interesting if you look at orlando like if you look at playoffstatus.com you look at their their calculations Cavs are still the the odds on favor to be the three seed in the east like they are gonna somewhat fall like not i don't want to say backwards but they're gonna like tiptoe sideways perhaps into being the three seed they're currently half a game up on the magic who are now the odds on favorite to be the four seed the knicks are the odds on favorite to be the five seed so Cavs knicks is like relatively still in play if, <laughs> if that's the way this goes um and then we can all uh, smash life our heads finds into a the wall so yeah and then with orlando that their, their last six games are this they get they play the Hornets on Friday when the Cavs are off. They have one more game than the Cavs. They have a game in hand. Uh, they they play the the Bulls on Sunday. Then they play the Rockets. They play the Bucks. They play the Sixers, and they play the Bucks again in their regular season finale. It's possible that they get to the regular season finale and they, the Bucks just like don't have anything to play for. But they're only like a game and a half up on the Cavs, and um, they maybe just like need the games. Like I there, there's a there's a chance that all of these teams are all still competing for something. The Knicks by comparison have the Bulls, the Bucks, the Bulls again, the Celtics, really good, Brooklyn, and then the Bulls. Uh, so they also have six games left versus five for Cleveland. This is going to come down to the wire. And like you might also just like want Mitchell for as many of those games you can get is the thing. And if you're saying we want to be the three seed, and even if the three, like you're just saying we want the highest seed possible, whether that gets us Indiana or gets us Miami, I think you want that, right? Like, I think that is that is kind of... Do you want Miami? No, I'm saying you want the three seed. I think oh, you'd rather just oh, have yes, the three okay. seed. Yeah. Misunderstood you, you, you there. Can't, yeah, you can't finagle any of this. Like, you at this Correct. point, and just considering what the East is, considering the Celtics are further ahead of the two seed than the one seed in the, in the West is ahead of, like, a team outside the play-in. That's just what the East is this year. 
Mm -hmm. Um, you can't finagle this. It's too jam packed. You're not good enough to finagle this. I think you just want to get the three seed. Say, okay, we're not on the same side of the bracket as the as the Celtics. I don't know how healthy Donovan Mitchell is going to be, but at least now, like our path to maybe just like pulling something off here is clearer than it would have been if we'd like second round. It's like, all right, we're just going to get stomped in five games, even if. Yeah, it's a little bit more clear than, as you said, getting stomped and maybe the Bucks just because they're an odd team. Um, I had recently said they're playing well under Doc Rivers. It appears that they are not because that, that Grizzlies loss is certainly stinging. Um, but uh, yeah, avoiding the Celtics is your cleanest path to getting as far as possible into the Eastern Conference Finals, which, you know, all things considered with how topsy-turvy this Cavs team has been and we will talk about this more when we just talk about the latest back-to-back the Cavs went through like yeah if you get to the ECF like that is two thumbs up like this team is much better off than I thought they were heading into the playoffs but um that's like we'll, five steps ahead also yeah like, five steps just... ahead like you, you got to focus on the first round um and depending on who you draw it makes it a lot more palatable I would say if you're the Cavs you ideally don't want to draw the Knicks but if you do Boy, howdy, buckle up. That is going to be <clears throat> quite the time um, just to kind of get your feet wet and in heading into the postseason. <laughs> yeah, the also, second year in a row. Yeah, also just like all of this to bring this home in terms of Donovan Mitchell, he could just like twist his knee and it's like, all right, well, that was fun. Well, that's that was cynical. Um, but yeah, that definitely could happen. No, but it's but it's it's not it's, cynical. It's real. It's, just, it's, it's realistic it's too. Yeah, it's reality. Like it's yeah. it would stink. I think it's it just like. But you, yeah, you hope but that's it, not the case. It, knock on wood. But, um, but we shall see what happens next. I guess. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's that's what all I really figuring. can't say. But also, just like to my point, I think it's going to be game by game. Like he very well could not play either game against LA, and the Lakers are playing very good ball as of late. And I think the Clippers, just at least on paper, always have the ability to be the best team in the arena any night. Um, and you just, yeah, take it on a game by game approach. Like you have to kind of maybe assume in game plan, like we may not have Donovan for this matchup. You just kind of roll with that, my, that thought process in every single game. I, I would assume or think after this, we're going to discuss Cavs jazz, a game they won and Cavs sons, uh, a game they looked pretty bad in and lost. So that's coming up right now on locked on Cavs. Today's episode of Locked on Cavs is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match, and this offer is good through April 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com forward slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. You can claim as early as Q1 2024 as validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing, of course, involves risk, including loss. Limitations do apply to IRAs and 401ks. A 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years and the 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA accounts are available to U.S. customers in good standing, and Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker-dealer. All right, coming back in, Cavs beat the Jazz, lose to the Suns, so beat the bad team, lost to the maybe good team, team that's not really consistent. We're going to look at what actually stood out in those two games. Evan, I'll start. I think it's obvious. Like we were talking before the show, and you're like, "That's you have kind of the obvious one." But well, I wouldn't say obvious. I kind of think, think it's it's, it's, it's the one that because yeah. Go the ahead. Jazz game is one of the weirdest games I've seen a player who I generally think of as being pretty good play. I don't understand how in a game where Donovan Mitchell did not play that he took what like five shots. I don't understand six shots. Excuse me, a whole whopping six shots. I don't understand like what he was doing. I don't understand like how any of that what's going on? Like I it doesn't make sense. 
and he just felt like he wasn't even on the floor, even though he had like eight assists. It's just like I, I don't understand how you take six shots. Like that's weird. That's like that's like deferring to the game flow in a drastic amount. And then you know he plays forty minutes basically against the Suns. He takes seventeen shots. Didn't look particularly good. The decision making for him of late, if there's anything you can say, that at least has gotten back to a good place where this is a turnover ratio looks good for the most part. It's like not, it's a lot of seven, eight, nine, ten assist games and like two, three turnover games. That's great. But then he's either not making shots or he's not taking shots. And I just re- I, I just remain confounded by Darius Garland and what you you how you can't really know what you're going to get from him on a night to night basis right now. It just remains bizarre to me that we ended up here with him. Do you still feel uh, as critical as me taking Jared Allen over him? Oh. Really killing it today. All right, Jake. Three, two, one. <clears throat> so, do you feel as comfortable in me taking or taking not taking Garland over Allen in our playoff no, player I, draft? No, the, but... the, this reinforces my logic because, like, you need like you need shot creators. You need guys to run the offense and like be like a highest paid player on your team lead like secondary 1a creator like that is always kind of yeah. the vision here and then it's just like can you is that like is he just like the odds of him just showing up round one day one of the playoffs and being the guy you need him to be it's it gets slimmer every game and it just it's it's bizarre and i like i can make sense of like a bunch of different things on this team and say okay even if like there's a slight dip for jared allen like they could overcome it I, I think if you're getting this Darius Garland, you're DOA. Like, you're, it's just, like, what are we doing here? Like, it, it's not as drastic as the Mitchell injury situation in terms of, like, what it would mean. But you just need another person to dribble and take shots and function. And he just isn't, like, even functioning in the way you need him to do right now. And that that's terrifies me, not just for now, but, like, is this just, like, what does this mean for him going forward? I have no idea. Yeah, going forward, I don't really know what the calculus is going to be with Garland. But as an aside, I was get, I wanted to let you cook after I was, heard you uh, leaving the, the train, leaving the station. But this is kind of the overarching theme for both games in this back to back. Because like Garland was just kind of unremarkable in both of them. Like you said, the assist numbers, I guess, are encouraging. At least he's getting other teammates involved. And in. yeah, the Jazz game overall was really weird. And I think, in just in the sense that. There was no Mitchell. This is a horrifically bad jazz team. Like Colin Sexton probably drank like seven Red Bulls and into and drank like a ton of coffee like Matthew Della Bedova at halftime anticipation of this matchup. And it, it just felt like the Jazz just aren't a good team. And the Cavs took care of business against a bad team as they do or have done all season long. But I think if the Cavs didn't have Karis Levert kind of just find a groove or Sam Merrill just become a flamethrower off the bench or George and Yang just really connect on a lot of shots or even the big to big passing or just Evan Mobley being very very consistently just dominant on both ends of the floor all throughout the game like if you didn't have that yeah this Garland game would be a lot easier to pick apart because it'd be like the biggest takeaway especially if they had lost to the jazz You're like oh well, darius what are you doing this is the franchise guard you're not really doing anything and it's just been odd ever since he's come back from injury um this time around like he's just been, it's been a really clunky and awkward fit and you can attribute a lot of things going on off the court or on the court like other what's going on but like i just don't fully understand it like is he quiet quitting on the team right now or something like is he frustrated something internally that nobody knows about who knows but he has not been great and he has not lived up to the standard of what people have expected of him, whether it's just people who cover this team fans or the organization itself. And I I think that's just disheartening because you're hoping at this juncture, like maybe weight wise, he's not where he needs to be at. Um, But like physically speaking, he has enough game reps and just minutes on the floor to say like, he is back in his element a little bit more compared to where he was before he broke his jaw surgery and or before he broke his jaw and had surgery. But it's just been very frustrating to watch him play. And again, like I think it kind of and once you break down the nitty gritty and the brass tacks of it, like, yeah, he was bad against the jazz. But it, it to me, like that was my a little bit of my takeaway. But I think it was for both of these games. But like in at least against the jazz, like you had Levert, you had Mobley, you had Allen, you had Niang and you had Merrill like really step up for the Cavs to like make Garland's just blehness just kind of 
go a little bit unnoticed versus like how he performed against the Suns. I did you think this kind of season? Like I obviously you can't predict jaw breaking. It's, we- it, it's the weirdest season. Like the, overall, it's just very hard to evaluate what this Cavs team is or could have been because we just don't have a clear idea just because of injuries and everything. I the whole season's been weird. He is like the weirdest of I don't even know if it's like an enigma. It's just like it's 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 just like you're caught in like a purgatory loop with him almost, right? Like it's just like like, like what do we do? Like, me- like he's mentally checked out and going through the motions? Like I don't know. Like I can't well, did diagnose you, did you, it. Did, did did you feel like there were times the other night where he wasn't passing to Mitchell when like he probably Mitchell's like calling for the ball? Because it kind of uh, like looks like it, that, like that I was had certainly thought. evident against the Suns game. Yeah, uh, more yeah. so like, like huh. sc- more like him. Mitchell screaming at Karis Levert not to drive to the basket, and then Levert ignored him and drove to the basket. But like, yeah, there were moments where like Mitchell was telling these guys like, "Hey, wake up and get in your spots." And like, it, it just feels like the Cavs are like a. I guess the only comparison I can like aptly think of is like they are a team that has won the championship. They know what it takes to go far in the playoffs, and they're just like, you know what? These last few games of the season are BS. Let's just try and get these reps so we don't stay rusty, but we're not trying to get hurt. But like the, the Cavs haven't earned any of that stuff. They have to kind of prove and wash off the stink of last year. And yeah, like that that Mitchell stuff, I, I was wondering if one of us would bring it up, but I'm glad you did. Like, they, yeah, like it just feels like there's some disconnect forming somewhere, and I, I just can't put my finger on it. I have no idea. I'm like what the source get- is of like, Okay, yeah. who is the issue here? Is it, and I'm not trying to project, like what, but like, like, is it is it somebody else on the team? Is it Darius? Is it the coaching? Is there something happening off the court that we're just not privy to? Nor is it like our business because Darius is a private person as well. It can ha- we can respect that privacy, but like, just something isn't adding up for me. And like, when you brought this up, like it just like again like further reaffirmed the fact that like yeah I'd rather have Allen than Garland right now because like Garland yeah on paper gives you everything you need but like he is not giving it to the Cavs at all since he's come back from this jaw surgery like he's just been kind of bled yeah yeah and like I I wanted to say again like that pick at him at two is not like I think I would rather have him it is he is going to dictate the outcome of this in a more important that's way that's completely right? fair I I agree like there is going to be probably yeah. a moment in a playoff game where it could be a momentum swinger or even possibly like a game winning scenario. And like, you're going to have to put the ball in Darius Garland's hands and ask him to do it. And like, that gives me pause right now, just based on what I've seen lately. Yeah. All right. Let, after the break, we ran a little long, Evan, after the break, you're going to give me your two. It's a good and talking then, point though. See, like I hit, I, sometimes you hit the single and you, you get a, you, they've fuck, someone messes up and you get a triple out of it. I almost swore that would have been well, bad. Know, All right. You, after you this, know, you, Cleveland Guardians, you hit a bloop and somehow you won the segment. So there you go. That's right, baby. We're bet. We're Guardians are so back. All right. After this, Evan's going to give us what he saw the last two games. We'll each give one thing we're looking forward to from the Cavs weekend in Los Angeles. Today's episode is brought to you by Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. This includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com backslash Locked On Fire TV. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around in the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. 
class exclusive Google built in your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid sized crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada. Will change what you expect from a full size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, Evan, what's your thing from the last two games? What what was your number one thing? Uh, the defense has been bad. Um, for context, coming out of the All-Star break, the Cavs are 25th in defensive rating. I know it's not like a catch-all stat, but it is a good indication of where they're at. Um, they're allowing 115 points, 115.5 points, excuse me, per 100 possessions. And like it, it doesn't get much better there like a lot of it is just the lack of three-point defense i think that has really been hamstringing the Cavs, um and it's just been really tough to watch i think it really became indicative against the nuggets which was uh, you know before this back-to-back but even against the suns like the, the 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 phoenix just got red hot from the perimeter a lot of it was devin booker then kevin durant killing them quietly all throughout the game but like the Cavs with two bigs on the floor are And for all the credit we give Evan Mobley, like he can't be everywhere all at once in the perimeter and on the interior. Like you need that secondary help. You need some of that just like assist if you can. But like it's really a tricky formula and something just kind of stood out to me. Like the Jazz made it dicey in the third quarter where like Utah kind of went on a bit of a run. And I'm like, "Mm, this Cavs team is kind of asleep at the wheel defensively. And for a team that's just not as good as they should be offensively right now. And I think injuries do play a big part in that. Um, the Cavs aren't able to lean on a backbone or core identity of defense. Like I just don't know what to expect from this team on a nightly basis. That's, that's just kind of my takeaway from this latest back to back, especially against Phoenix where they got torched on the perimeter. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned. Like it's straight up. Just like it's, the vibes are is... not immaculate as they were at points in January or pretty much all of last season. Yeah. I think the last time uh, I was talking about this with, with the front of the program, Jackson Flickinger, uh, the Cavs in lineups with Mobley and Allen on the floor, teams are shooting like over forty percent from three against them. The Cavs on the, the Cavs on the year. This this is um, in terms of defensive, free, in terms of three point makes percentage, Cavs on the year are not are are uh, they're a close to league average in terms of what they're giving up three thirty seven point five percent. Lake, but it's like the Lakers, Brooklyn, San Antonio, Charlotte, Toronto, Atlanta, Memphis, Sacramento, and Utah are the teams below them. Like, so you're like, you're not in a, there's not like a team in your category that is close to you. And then if you look at just percentage of threes that you give up from three, Cavs are like also giving up. Um, like they're, they're a little that, that's that's with a slightly below average three point rate against them on the season. I say like, I, got, I got the numbers in front of me because I did write about yeah. this last night. Um, <clears throat> I'll just read the paragraph verbatim. Since Cleveland reconvened to begin the second half of their 2023 24 campaign, they've been 25th in defensive rating, allowing 115.5 points per 100 possessions, as I noted. They're 20th in allowed field goal percentage, allowing their opponents to convert on 47.6% of their attempts on the floor. More worryingly, worryingly, the Cavs are allowing the third most three-point attempts against them in the same span, with opponents connecting on 39.2% of their attempts beyond the arc. They're the third worst their defense in the NBA. Like, that's not great, Bob. But, like, yeah. even if you had, like, Isaac Okoro and Dean Wade out there, like, I don't think you're slowing down the Suns and the Nuggets like this. Like, there's just, again, some something is not passing the smell test on top of what I'm seeing out there. Like, defensively, they're kind of getting cooked. And I don't know what their net rating is. I think it's, like, negative four point something now just be based on their offensive rating. Um, like, that four point to five point gap um is pretty significant for a team that is just not good right now on either end of the floor it is just awkward weird times for the Cavs, and it's kind of done all right this weekend two games in la lakers purse lakers 
the worst of those two teams, but they have this guy named LeBron James. They have this other guy named Anthony Davis, both very good. They play a very grating, slow style. I think that's possibly like the less watchable of the two games, just based on how the Lakers play and how the Cavs are playing right now. The Clippers, on the other hand, will not be on the second end of a back-to-back when the Cavs are. That gives the Clippers a huge advantage on top of being at home. Uh, the Clippers maybe are not playing at their peak in the way they were earlier this season. A, uh, speaking of bad vibes, that is not a good vibes basketball team, right? Okay, but yeah, but here's the here's the difference. Here's the very subtle difference. Not even subtle. It's just like they have Ty Lue, who's this to me the second best coach in the NBA, maybe the third best coach in the NBA, and they have Kawhi Leonard, who's better than anyone. I was the Cavs just have. mostly poking fun at um, Paul George asking about James Harden. He's like, "Well, I'm not the coach. Don't ask." Him. Yeah. So the the it's Clippers a are a team I keep eyes on just because one, their new branding is going to be so good. But two, like if they keep PG thirteen, th- this team will I don't want to say be a consistent title threat, but they'll always just be like a team that is built to go far. Especially because, like you said, Ty Lue is a proven playoff winner, and if he is fully healthy heading into the postseason, uh, the Mavericks might be a t- tough draw in round one. But like. They are an annoying team, but like, yeah, the Lakers aren't great. As you had noted, they play a lot slower. They are a grittier team just at this juncture, but they have won like eight of their last nine, if I remember correctly. Um, And so another eight and two in their last 10, they've won three in a row and you know, they are a good home team. And like LeBron just is LeBron James. He's going to show out and put on a show against his former team. So, so which, which, which game are you more anticipating? Both, frankly, but I think the Clippers one just because I think the Lakers one will be a bit of a beatdown, and just because of the the griminess and the toughness of that matchup, like how can the Cavs survive that and be able to stand up straight against a Clippers team that's rested compared to them? Um, and also, like, what who who does Mitchell play? Does he play in both of them? Does he play in one of them? Does he play in neither of them? Like that that is also up in the air too. Yeah, it's, the, my answer is whatever whatever game Donovan Mitchell plays is my answer. That's a fair, 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 fair assessment. Just because, like, he, uh, we talked about it a little bit in the first segment. Like, he had some juice against the Suns. Like, the, the Cavs could very well need that uh, when they're in LA this week. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, the Cavs at least get some good meals, enjoy the nightlife, maybe sneak down to Phoenix and the Scottsdale for a Final Four game or something. Yep, the world's your oyster when you have lots of money and, and free time on your hands, uh, depending on when you fly back. But that's going to be it for this episode of Locked on Cavs. They could get back for the women's Final Four. Well, they're going to miss the, the Sunday one, but they could. They don't play a Wednesday. They don't play a what, Wednesday? You could say and yeah. watch the women's Final Four. I know. I don't watch think any one of their teams four. in there. They yeah, might come back for the total eclipse. Who knows? JB did say to me that he is uh, disappointed schedule wise that they aren't home for the final four because <clears throat> he wanted to be there personally as a fan of basketball. And he's also just like the ticket prices are insane. And my kids are trying to find, uh, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Kids are trying to, trying to find tickets that I can justifiably pay for. Cause it's like a gazillion times more expensive than the men's final four okay. as it should all, be. All, okay. Cause the women's all, tournaments all. ruled this year. Okay, but all I'm going to say, and I'm not trying to count someone's money when they have to pay taxes in every city he coaches in, J.B. Bickerstaff, you make lots of money. Just pay. You have, you make millions of dollars. What are the millions of dollars for unless you're going to put, like, pay for, and what are the crumble franchises for unless you want to, like, take your kids to see Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers and, and South Carolina? Like, what are we doing? Not even just an individual player, just South Carolina as a so Camille, I mean, no, but that they're undefeated. That team's incredible. Like oh, the yeah, bet you can awesome. get on them right now is like them versus the field. Like and they have Camille Cardoso who's gonna probably be a top three, four pick in the WNBA draft. Like that team's awesome. But it's like that te- that that the appeal of that of the final four now is okay, they're the they're like the, the big killers. It's Caitlin Clark and then yeah, it's so, Paige no. Beckers at, at UConn. Like and it's they don't have like the like the 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 person on person showdown is Paige and Caitlin on Friday. It is not like Card Camila Cardoso versus no uh, that be must see TV. Um, and real quick as we head out, do you wish LSU was in the Final Four instead of having to be Iowa's roadblock to get to the Final Four? I mean, sure, but like the bracket is the bracket. You the know? bracket is like, the bracket, the, but I I do think it would have been fun just for like you know the off court like 
stardom. Like I know lover or hater Kim Mulkey and the LSU Tigers are part of that L- must see TV, but um, I don't know. It is cool though. Uh, it is fun to hear what Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark have to say about Cleveland because there's like it's so cool. There's so much stuff to do, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Like it's just nice to hear people say nice things about where you live. Yeah, but, well, what Caitlin Clark said about the Rock Hall is like I don't know if you could actually spend as much time as she as you think there, Caitlin. Um, the other, no. look, I, here's the thing though, L- Iowa LSU like even was in the Final Four, did twelve point three million viewers according to ESPN. It was the most it's like watched the most college basketball game, game ever yeah, on ESPN. Like, I was my wife was stunned. She's just like, you're really locked in. I'm like, yeah, this is like, I've been looking forward to this game. Like it's going to be nuts. And it was nuts. Did a lot just more innings in like maybe finals games. Good for the sport. Good for the sport. Great for the sport. Yeah. That, that we're going to be, we're going to end there. We'll be, uh, we'll be back Saturday after Cavs Lakers recap that. And then I'll be here Sunday after Cavs Clippers to recap that one um and then we're in the home stretch of the Cavs 2023-24 regular season i'm chris Mendy. that's it we'll talk to you guys on the-